What is up? My fellow Chibits, hopefully all of you are having a very, very good day, because today I'm here to talk about Hunter Hunter chapter 372. Now I know, I know that this chapter has been out since last week on Friday, and I know today it's Monday, you guys might be seeing this on a Tuesday because depending on how long this takes to get out, but uh, I know, and the reason why this video has been delayed for so long is because of the translations. Here's the thing. The MS translation, which is okay, you can understand things, at sometimes I feel like it just, it makes Hunter x Hunter too complicated more than it should be. And so, I wanted to wait until official translations came out, which came out today from Viz Media. I wanted to actually read the official translations before I could actually get a good understanding of what was going on in this chapter because like I said MS sometimes the way their translations are and how they have been very recently with some translations of other chapters now look I'm not putting them down like I'm thankful for what they translate but I mean at the same time though Hunter Hunter is a series to where when you're reading it you need the best possible translations because if you don't have good translations you're not going to be able to understand a lot of things and so that is why I waited and so that is why this video was delayed. I wanted to be able to talk about all the details in proper detail without, you know, mixing things up because of, you know, how there might have been, you know, an awkward translation. So, yeah. Anyways, I want to be doing this uh, video style like my classic Tokyo Ghoul, uh, you know, review style. I'm sitting in my chair and I want to be analyzing panel by panel, talking about the chapter and, you know, diving into it and then, you know, Hopefully you guys want to discuss with me in the comments below about certain things about it. But anyways, okay, so chapter 372 titled Disappearance. So we get to see, you know, the um, Benjamin's actual bodyguard at the beginning of the chapter. He's looking around at, you know, Kurapika's group, you know, who he's teaching. And you see two people that are using Nen. Their aura is spiked up. It's it's incredibly large compared to like a newcomer that's new to using Nin. It shouldn't be that large. That's basically what he's pointing out. He's like, yo, yo, like if you're wanting to, you know, try to hide your Nin and all of that, like you shouldn't be acting like you have that crazy Nin. Because remember on the first day, they, you know, a lot of people were hiding their Nin. Remember that. Remember a couple of people, they were hiding their Nin to where like they wanted to stay, you know, in cover and all that. Where, you know, Kurapika wouldn't realize that they have the capabilities of using Nin. Well, these two... They didn't raise their hand that day to say they could use Nin, but in the start of this chapter, it's obvious that they are very exceptional in the ability of using Nin because their aura is just spiking up. So he basically questions like, uh, amateurs can't make that much aura right off the bat. You're advertising your experience. That's basically what the bodyguard says. What was the point of not raising your hands? are Ninth Prince Hawkenberg's people idiots. So basically, he's just like, why is the Ninth Prince's bodyguards now doing something like this when they didn't raise their hand? It's just like saying, hey, I can use Nin. It just, it doesn't make sense. So, yeah, that's basically the conflict at the beginning of the chapter. And so Kurapika, you know, he confronts the two bodyguards that are underneath Hulkenberg. Now, as a quick FYI, Hulkenberg, because I know it's been a while and you might have forgotten who Hulkenberg was, Hulkenberg is the dude that wants to kind of settle everything peacefully. He wants to actually end, you know, the entire secession war and all that. For instance, you know, where the princes don't have to compete. He he wants to make it to where everything ends peacefully. We've seen this. He's a very different individual from all the others. However, remember as I stated a long time ago when I was doing my reviews of Hunter x Hunter, there is a little detail about Hulkenberg that is very weird and stands out. He actually finds terror, you know, the, uh, Sir Nitsch or whatever his name is, how do you ever, you know, say the fourth prince's, uh, name, it basically, he has a bond with him, Hulkenberg has a bond with that messed up individual that has Kurapika's clan's eyes, so, for the man Hulkenberg to have a connection with someone like that, there obviously is a darker secret to him that we just don't know, but, um, it, it, these are his bodyguards, and Kurapika's like, are you trying to test me right now? Like, are you testing me? You can actually use Nin completely fine. And they're like, huh, no, we're not testing you. They, they, they basically reply, like, we're not trying to test you. And what this kind of confirms is that their Nin popping up like it is, it's not because they were actually willingly doing that. It was actually because the actual Nin Beast, what the Nin Beast did to them. So, there's some clarification here. The Nin Beast of Hulkenbergs, when he marked all of them with the actual feather, 
he made it to where he allowed them to be in a half nin state, where they're half awakened. They're able to have nin. But they can't see Nin yet. Like, it's like he opened up their pores, basically, what we've seen a long time ago in Hunter x Hunter. And that's what's happening here. So they basically had their Nin pop up. And this also lets us know that all the people that, you know, got affected by Hulkenberg's Nin Beast... They all have their Nin very similar to these two bodyguards. So it's not just these two bodyguards that have the capabilities of using Nin now. It's also the other bodyguards. So, in a way, Hockenberg just made his entire army, his entire force, with capabilities of using Nin. Now, let's take this one step further as well. It's dived into details that it's obvious that they're being manipulated. That the bodyguards of Hockenberg are being manipulated because of the mark that's on their hand. And with this mark on their hand, it, Kurt Pika's like, okay, so they're being manipulated, but it can be a variety of things of what's going on here. That they're possibly getting manipulated. So Kurt Pika dives into a subcategory of manipulators, which just completely surprised me. Because this gives some clarification to manipulators and how we can tell them apart from each other. So Kurt Pika's like, okay, so there's different types of manipulation and what you guys are currently experiencing. Because obviously you guys are able to walk around and do certain things and you're not, you know, under the effects of what was going on with Momo. You know, how her Nimbus a while back was forcing a dude near Kurt Pika to just lose all sanity and attack and all of that. He couldn't even control anything. That's a different type of manipulation compared to what's going on with Hulkenberg's, you know, uh, his body guards and how they're being manipulated right now so let me read the actual details so one uh manipulation tactic or a subcategory of it is depriving the target's freedom in mind and body and then there's a you know a pseudo manipulation taking physical freedom or driving them into a situation where they have no choice the 12th prince momo's nin beast so basically what this is letting us know is that right now the effects are completely different if it's depriving the target's freedom in mind and body it's like saying they're able to do what they want, they're able to think what they want, but if they do anything outside of what the actual manipulator wants them to do, there will be severe consequences. That's basically what you can get from that. And as in the pseudo, you know, manipulation and all that, the other one basically is to where they... They have no choice. They literally have no option. They will be forced to move. They, they can't stop themselves. So... That you have one manipulation where they can, but like I said, consequences, and then there's another to where they just, there won't be any consequences because they just can't control themselves in the first place. So think of Shalnark, basically. That, that's a perfect way to think about it. So I, I like that. I like the subcategories that were revealed in this chapter when it comes to manipulation. It does clarify a couple of abilities that we have seen throughout Hunter x Hunter. So anyways, what does this necessarily mean? What does it mean that... Now that they're being manipulated, their nin has been opened up. Let's look at the positives here. The first thing is that they are being manipulated. And you probably have forgotten this little detail, but if someone is manipulated by another manipulator, they can't be manipulated by another nin user. That uses manipulation. So, okay, let, let, let's just say, like, uh, Kurapika is a manipulator. Hypothetical, okay, hypothetical. Kurapika is able to manipulate people. And... You know, you have someone else's nin ability, like Hulkenberg's, like Nin Beast, manipulating all the bodyguards. Kurapika couldn't go in, and he couldn't manipulate, you know, the bodyguards, because they're already under the effect of a manipulation. This was already previously established a long time ago. So, in a way, Hulkenberg's Nin Beast has given, or given all of the bodyguards a safe haven. They, they cannot be manipulated at all. Nobody could come in and manipulate them because they're already under the effects of a Nin ability. So that's a plus for them. That, that is definitely a big plus. On top of giving them Nin, he's also making it to where they can't be manipulated. Now, another thing that is also stated is that right now, the best way to look at this manipulation is that they're under the effects of the the princes, the ninth princes, Hulkenberg's actual his charisma, his justice, his belief, basically, what he stands for. And Hulkenberg is also affected by this as well. So it means that everybody a part of his group, they're all equals. They stand on a level playing field. Nobody in Hulkenberg's unit are, you know, higher than each other. They're all equals. So in a way, this is a good thing, and it's honorable in a way. It makes you feel better about yourself, but it's also a scary thing because... It lets us know that whatever effects the bodyguards are under, the king is also under. Or, you know, Hulkenberg, my bad. Hulkenberg, the ninth prince, he's also under that. So, 
yeah, they, they are all under the same consequences. The question is, what exactly are those consequences are left to be seen? And that's what Kurapika actually wants to know. Now, their actions right now, the way they're acting towards Kurapika and, you know, communicating with him and all that, you can also look at this as a way of manipulation. They are going out of their way to help Hulkenberg's cause and make it to where his belief in justice will be, you know, brought forward and all that, and he can kind of end the secession war. That's basically what's happening here. So, yeah, interesting little stuff. Interesting stuff with this. I I'm very curious to see where Togashi wants to take this direction with Hulkenberg. He he's a very fascinating character. He's very different from the others, and I'm just very curious to see exactly how he's going to turn out since he does have a connection to the Fourth Prince. So let's get into uh, Marion. So Marion is the prince, a uh, younger prince than Momo that actually, you know, we know that died died a couple of chapters back. Remember, she got assassinated, and even in this chapter, we see where Hanzo is going out of his way to get justice for the death of her, basically. But, um, Marayam, to kind of go into his character details, which I have pulled up right here, his personality, he appears to be fond of his pet hamster, and he carries it with him even to formal events. He also seems to enjoy video games. He appears to be reluctant to manifest negative feelings. That's basically what his personality is. That's the only thing we really know about Mariam's actual character at this moment, but his sister, as we know, just died, and since he is not really good with showcasing his emotions, this makes him very weird, especially with what is going on with his Nim Beast. So basically, uh, Bisky and uh, Hanzo <clears throat> actually go into the... Uh, the uh, details of what's going on with the Nimbeast. So basically, Bisky's like, it used to look like a graceful floating dragon. And then Hanzo's like, and it gradually became fiercer and bulked up. And, and uh, his sister's death accelerated the change. So as we know, the Nimbeast, the way they look and how they act and their abilities, it is affected by the host, the host's body. So however they are personally, like in their mind and all that, mentally will change the Nimbeast. The Nimbeast will take that form, basically. And so, because of what's going on with, you know, Mariam and what happened to his sister and all the emotions he's probably been feeling, obviously the Nimbeast would take shape. Even though he is a type of boy that we've seen that doesn't really show much emotion, obviously there's some internal conflict going on. There's a lot of emotions welling up inside of him, which is causing this internal struggle, which is changing the Nimbeast. So basically, his sister's death accelerated the change. The spines are a manifestation of self-defense. Anxiety, fear, stress, and trauma are clearly affecting the Nim Beast. So that's pretty much clarification of what's happening to the Nim Beast. It's just changing form overall. And the question is, how much of it is it changing? Like, is it its abilities changing completely? Is it just its physical appearance? Its personality? There's a lot of questions I have about that, but it is definitely changing. And it's, you know, not looking as you know, graceful as it once did, you know, using Bisky's words. So, so moving into the next part of this chapter, let's talk about Hanzo's ability, his Nin ability finally getting revealed. So I want to read this panel. So he, he states that uh, he, he's going to go find out who assassinated Momo. And this is what he says. If anyone touches or talks to my original body, I'll get called back. I need you to be my lookout, Bisky. And he's like, Hanzo, skill four, art of the doppelganger. So this, this is his ability. This is the first time we really ever got to see Hanzo's Nin ability. So I know this is going to be many, many jumping and joy for this chapter just because of that detail alone. But I want to point something out. He says, Hanzo, skill four. Four. Big thing out there, four. That means that if this is Hanzo, skill four... There's three other things before it. For instance, Hanzo skill 1, 2, and 3, and there's potentially something beyond skill 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, I, I, I don't know. It just depends on how far Togashi wants to go. So it's not just the doppelganger ability that Hanzo has. He has other abilities that can be very different, vastly different from one another. If I had to assume anything, it's probably going to have something to do with ninja techniques. Common sense there. But yeah, so doppelganger isn't the only thing he has. This is just skill 4. Now, I do want to point out that his weakness, apparently, to this ability is that he leaves his body behind and he enters into, like, a, a spirit-like state. Like, he, it's like his soul or whatever comes out of his body and he's able to move around. But his body, his real body, is just sitting there, just laying down and all that, not being able to do anything. And apparently, if anyone touches or talks to his body, then that would mean that he would be called back. So, I'm, I'm assuming, that, like, 
depending on where he's at, no matter the distance, he will instantly be called back. But let's talk about this line right quick, okay? If anyone touches or talks to my body, that's the thing there, talks to my body. What if someone's having a conversation to Bisky, but in, in fact, in reality, the person is directing the conversation to Hanzo? Think about that. So, there could potentially be a workaround to this ability. If someone is talking to someone else beside him, or just stating facts to themselves, maybe he won't be called back. That's a big thing. Now, uh, another thing to look at, too, is, is that at the end of the chapter, we see the, uh, Mariam's, you know, Nin Beast, it's looking at, you know, Hanzo's spiritual body and all that and he's no longer in his bed bisky's no longer in the bed either which it's just you know putting a lot of red flags out there because you're like wait a minute whoa that doesn't make much sense like why didn't he get called back because if his body was touched or someone talked to it obviously he'd be called back but that hasn't happened yet so the only thing you could assume is that it had something to do with mariam's nin beast the nin beast is what actually caused it now what happened is left to be seen but if i had to assume anything and i highly doubt i'm the only one to come to this conclusion but if i had to assume anything of what's probably going on with uh you know hanzo's body and what's going on with the nin beast most likely the nin beast probably put Hanzo and everybody else that was in that room and in that area into like some form of different dimension. That's what I would assume. Because we have seen abilities like this before. Think about, you know, Chitu. You know, I think that's his name. Chitu or whatever. The Cheetah guy. Basically, we saw this too. We, we saw this a while back. So there is a likely possibility that maybe this Nimbeast has the ability to put someone into like a different dimension, separate dimension, maybe not even being aware of it. Maybe Bisky is not even aware of her being in a separate dimension. Likely possibility. But th what makes this even more possible, why this could potentially be the ability of the Nimbeast, is because of Mariam's personality. I want to reinstate the fact that Mariam, he always carries his hamster around in a cage. Think about that. So what if he thought everybody was around him, they needed to be protected. He loved them, he wanted them to be protected, and so he forced them all into a cage, which the Nim Beast is able to create. Think about it, because remember, the Nim Beast is changed by the, the personality of, you know, the host. So that could be why. Maybe he wasn't, uh call back but the big thing you gotta wonder now is is if he is separated from his body what happens technically like if his main body dies like if it's a separate dimension maybe he won't be called back in there into his body since they're separated completely and that would mean that if his body dies what would happen to this ability what would happen to his doppelganger a lot of questions i have thanks to this alone so yeah anyways Next thing to look into, let's talk about the assassination real quick, okay? So, this is a little bit before, you know, he encounters the Nim Beast and his body's missing. Um, the, uh, he finally encounters the person that killed Momo, okay? He, he was hunting him down, he was very angry, we saw this a while back. He finally found the person. And, basically, he was just going from person to person that was, you know, suspect, trying to figure out who it was, and he, he basically found the man and set the man up, and, you know, basically choked him to death with a rope. And here's the thing I want to point out, that this dude's ability is very similar to Hanzo's ability, Doppelganger. Like, let me read this, okay? He says, um, okay, my ability is Doppelganger Astral Projection, the touch. If I close my eyes and lay prone, my Doppelganger can do anything within 20 meters. So, his ability, I, I want to point out, is very similar to Hanzo's and what's going on in this chapter. So, that's scary. Why do I have a feeling that Hanzo could potentially be set up for something in the future? I have a feeling that's probably going to happen because his abilities are just too similar. Way too similar to each other. Because he's going to be the only one that looks like the assassin that probably did something to Momo because, you know, Nin abilities haven't been confirmed, doppelgangers too, and this man being dead and all that, and he's the only real witness. It just makes sense that... It seems like Togashi's setting up Hanzo for possibly getting framed or whatever for Momo's death. Now, another thing to look at as well, there is a way for Hanzo to get out of this. If he is, you know, accused of killing Momo and all this and all of these things that's going on. As I said earlier on in this video, he has 
multiple skills. Remember, this is Hanzo's skill 4, Doppelganger. So he has three other skills before that, and potentially a 5 and 6 or whatever. So, yeah. E even if he is questioned, it doesn't necessarily mean he has to use, you know, skill 4. He could use skill 1, 2, or 3 if they're completely different. So, he, he is kind of safe at the moment, but like I said, I feel like this is a plot point that's going to be used in the future. So, Cell sells in this chapter, and he has something planned. We don't really get much progression going on with that overall. I mean, he's just basically doing what we've seen from him so far, having a bunch of women, having fun. You know, his NIMBYs to just spitting out garbage, basically spitting all that disgusting looking. And apparently, he's going to say whatever he's going to do over the PA system, so... Everybody's probably going to hear it. Every single floor probably will hear it if he's putting it on the PA system. So it probably won't be just the top levels, but all the way down to where the Phantom Trope is as well. So, yeah. That's um, probably what's going to happen. That's what I would assume, so... Okay, so let's talk about, um... Let's talk about Tyson. Tyson, as we know what type of character she is, she's a very... Very weird individual. Her Nim Beast is very weird. And I have a bad feeling that those little, like, nin creatures you see on top of their shoulders in this chapter, I have a feeling that they are some way, like, manipulators. I I I'm getting a feeling that they're able to manipulate someone's personality, because let's look at the final bubble of this page. Shut up, why are you so happy-go-lucky? Basically, Izu's asking this to his friend that, you know, read the title and all of that of the book, and read, you know, the uh, chapter titles. And then he, he's saying this to him, like, why are you acting so happy-go-lucky? What if, as soon as you open up the book, since it is connected to, you know, Tyson, what if it manipulates you in some way? It, I mean, nin abilities are a very strange thing, very complicated things, and so what if? What if? So, I feel like maybe it might be mani uh, manipulating their personalities or something. Possibility. But, uh, not much really going on there besides that. The investigators investigating the mother, Mariam's mother and all that, and Momo's mother. We have an investigation going on, and pretty much what's happening there is, like, the mother's like, I have nothing to say. I, I have nothing to say to you, um, I don't care if this is, like, an official, you know, report or whatever, this might be formality. I, I don't care. I, I, I don't care at all, because I, I have nothing to say, I no and I won't change anything I've already said. And so, yeah, pretty much there's no progression going on there. The mother is holding firm, not saying anything, and, you know, Mardiom, he's getting very stressed about it. And it just shows that the mother has no sense of guilt. It, it, it looks like she, uh, she has no guilt whatsoever within her about what actually happened to Momo, so... Yeah. But that's basically... I, no, 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 there's actually one more thing to discuss. So, uh, the bodyguard, the first prince bodyguard, you know, Benjamin's bodyguard... Um, he, he apparently knows who the assassin is. He, he knows who the assassin is. We don't get to see who the person is, but apparently they're really good at hiding their nin, but he knows who the assassin is. So, yeah, that's something to really look into. So, we'll find out. There'll probably be a clash between those two very soon. And talking about the final page, Kami, Kami wants to go and kill Benjamin. That's probably not going to end too well. <laughs> I, I don't think that's going to... Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to end well at all, because uh, we, we know what would happen. But at the same time, it could be some Nin Beast play going on here. Maybe she's good with Nin. Maybe she's, uh, you know, even more exceptional with Nin than, you know, the Fourth Prince, you know, uh, Niche. It'd be uh, interesting if she is, but for now, her she's getting very cocky. She's trying to get rid of Benjamin, go for him. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it falls in line with the character. I don't know how far it's going to get her, but yeah. So I want to end this video here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you, uh, enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. So please be safe, stay healthy, stay warm. Chibi out.